Let's bring in Daniel Geltrude now, who's an accountant and founder of Geltrude and Company. Uh, first of all, are these higher prices temporary or are they, are they here to stay for a while? Well, that really depends, Arthel. This time of year, Memorial Day weekend, it is typical that we see a rise in prices, and that's primarily driven by fuel costs, right? Because people now are starting to travel. It's the beginning of the summer season, of the leisure season. So we're going to see prices going up. However, we are in a little bit of a different scenario this year. We are in what I believe a perfect inflationary storm and the reason i say that is because demand with the supply chain coming out of the pandemic so it, we're drinking from a a fire hose in terms of trying to balance between supply and demand i don't think that balance is going to happen anytime soon so i believe we're going to see inflationary uh, prices definitely through the summer and probably through the end of the year. Wow, so s supply and demand upside down. Any way to avoid or offset the rising prices? It's really difficult because all of us are subject to what happens in our environment. But I think what we need to do here is we need to look at what is happening from a legislative standpoint. The federal government is looking to spend even more money, which is another, shall we say, stimulant to the economy, which will end up having us having an overstimulated economy. Kicks in. And the most important thing to remember here, inflation is a tax. It's a hidden tax, but it's a tax because it reduces your your the money, the amount of money you have in your pocket. And that's hmm. not good for anyone. So, Daniel, you're saying that the, the economy is now over, you know, stimulated, if you will, uh, on the part of the federal government. So how does this work, though? What's the, the impact of, to the overall economy? Because you've got businesses big and small looking to recover from the shutdowns. It actually will end up having the opposite effect in terms of slowing down the economy. For example, when you go into a restaurant these days, in many parts of the country, things are more expensive and service is slower. Why? They simply can't get enough help. The part of the reason that's happening is, is because the federal government has opposite direction. They're incentivizing people not to get back to work. So again, that's why I say we're in, in this perfect storm where all roads lead to inflation and it's going to be difficult to get out of it, except if government would simply get out of the way. Another guest we had on this afternoon, Daniel, said uh, uh, one way to get folks back to work and folks, you know, comfortable shopping and, 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 the, and the rest is to get everybody or as many people as possible, more people vaccinated. What's your take on that? Well, I agree. I think that people do need to get vaccinated because that's the step in getting back to normal. But literally, if everyone was vaccinated, what good would it be unless people go back to work? Otherwise, we have a bunch of vaccinated people at home collecting unemployment. So it's a combination of vaccines and getting back to work. OK, we will leave it there. Daniel Giltrude, good to see you. Thank you very much. Thank you.